Welcome to TTC Cars, I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And we've got something very blue for you today, and that is the 2020, crap, what year is this? It's a car from the future, because it's a 2024 Subaru Impreza, or Impreza as the Americans say, RS. And it's very blue, we know that, because this is Oasis blue, and gosh, does it look great. Reminds me of the same color you find on the BRZ and Toyota GR86. There's not a metallic flake to it, there's not a whole lot of pearl, it's just a good shade of blue. Now, the RS is positioned for Impreza as the, well, the WRX hatch is gone. So this is kind of the next closest thing you can get. And RS is marketed as the sportiest one you can get. We debate that a little bit and we'll get into that more in a minute, but let's start with the exterior. This looks really like corporate Subaru nose. It looks like Subaru WRX minus some cladding, except for the lip down here still has some texture to it. I'm okay with that. That's still like, that fits a Subaru. But these guys, these aren't cladded like you would find on a Crosstrek. These are actually, you know, gloss black, um, which means they'll probably scratch at some point, but it's all good. But then here comes the cladding again, right around the fog lights. But because it's a Subaru, you still get fog lights. I love fog lights. That's a good thing. Let's take around the side and check out the wheels. So these wheels are the 18 inch black wheels. They're specific to the RS trim. If you get a base or a sport, you don't get this wheel. So it does have Yokohama Advans. These are the uh, S34s. They are 225, 4018s, a very common size for sport compacts. And look, we've blasted them a little bit on our back road. They let go relatively quick. Um, this is more of an all season than a sticky tire, and that's okay, that's really fitting for what the car actually is. Good news is on the highway, they are super quiet and they don't tram line too much around urban roads. Good livable tire. Now, coming on the side, whoa, whoa, wait, did you see that? That's RS. That's how you know this is the top trim and that red theme will continue elsewhere in a minute. You also get the um, black painted mirror caps and then a bunch of black trim around the windows. No chrome here, nothing to confuse the buyer. The RS also with this package has the optional uh, option group and it gives you the sunroof and the hardened carbon stereo. And of course, it's a Subaru, you gotta have roof rack mounting points. You've got that cover for your rooftop basket. Looks out of the way. Ooh, fuel cap doesn't have a release lever. I like that a lot. Oh no, it's a cap. It's not the capless system. But you have a holder. Okay, partial pass. We'll take that. Unleaded fuel only, does not ask for premium, doesn't need it, so 87 has you covered. If you live in Colorado and you can't even get 93, don't worry about it, you're covered. Now, out back, RS continues with badging right here. That's part of this package. Of course, it's all-wheel drive because it's Subaru and you have your, your reflectors down low, traditional lobster claw style tail lights. You do have a little bit of a diffuser down low. That's for the speed. <laughs> For all that speed, Craig. And then it's also got a um, hidden exhaust tip. Let's hear it rev, what do you think? Let's do it. Okay, not bad, let's see what's under the hood. Under the hood, are you ready, Craig? Don't laugh. It's a 2.5, Craig, because the RS should be a 2.5. Naturally aspirated boxer flat four, 182 horsepower, 178 foot-pounds of torque. Now. Well, it looks easy to work on. Gosh, it is. It has this oil cooler here that the BRZ still has. It has the same AC lines as a BRZ. It has the same intake manifold or looking manifold as a BRZ or GR86. I just gotta say, Subarus are like Legos. They're so easy to work on. I do appreciate that part. I will confess though, my biggest complaint here is that this powertrain is totally competent. It makes a good amount of power. I have no problem with that. But the CVT just saps the fun. And we're gonna talk about that more when we drive in a minute. But first, it's time for interior. All right, Brian, the RS used to not be a hatch, but this one is a hatch because WRX doesn't get a hatch. So here we go. Let's see what's good about that. Open it up. Ooh. And oh, look at this, Brian. We got some Camry gear. We're gonna move that out of the way for a second because I want you to see all this room back here. You get all this room. And just like any good hatch, you fold the seats down, you just pull a lever and push it down and boom, yeah. Bob Junko, if the seat wouldn't sit there. But you got plenty of room here. And Brian, look over here. You get a spot for your water bowl for your dog and a little pet treat carrier. So okay. your animals can still come back here. They, they can come up this little ramp and this, these mountains. Oh, design. Mountains. Look at yeah. that. Okay. And they can hang out back here and and do dog be, stuff. Be in comfort and do dog stuff, yes, right. and enjoy the scenery. So that part's really cool. The hatch part is nice and very functional. Underneath here, let's see if we get a spare tire. No, no we 
but you, you get a inflator kit. Inflator kit with some uh, stop uh, stop leaky whatever stuff. But so you do have like an insulated tray down here. You could put more dog food there if you need to. Right, right, yeah. All in right. fact, I would I would just fill it up with dog food. Right. All right, moving on to the rear seat, Brian. Let's check out the door first, though. One of the things I do like is just black on black on black. I know we had a uh, Colorado recently, you didn't like that, but what that does is this holds up over time. It's not gonna change colors. That's the color it's gonna be for the rest of its life. Also, it's very Subaru-y. They give you plenty of room for your monster run, so you can just put that in right there and you're good to go. What about your vape pen? And your vape pen if you want to. Okay, thank you. Also, check out the door sill. Why does a hatchback that sits this low have that with the little mountains cut in, Brian, because it's a Subaru by golly, and that's so you can stand there and reach your roof rack or whatever you're putting on tier. They still think about that, even though it's a lowered car. That's kind of cool. I like that. Moving on to the back, let's get in the seat and um, see what kind of room we got. I'm sitting behind myself. I'm five foot nine, Brian, six foot four. I was driving last, so I have plenty of room, but there's also still some room to spare. We got, some, we definitely got some room to play with there. I've got plenty of headroom myself. Let's see what Brian has when he gets in here. Okay, okay. Ah, my knees. Now I'm sitting behind me. Um, so, but this can go up a little bit. This isn't bad. It's actually really good. And the headroom is, you know, not enough. But I'm a big guy. I'm six four, six five, mostly in the torso. So in terms of height, let's call it six five for the torso section. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a bit, bit short. Okay, that's okay. Um, moving on to the back though. Let's continue. We get uh, USB A and USB C. They even tell you how much amperage you get in each one. So let's upgrade to USB C because you get more, more is better. So we got we do have a center armrest that comes with a small car, which is very handy because this is a small car. So, uh, but look, it's convenient. It's in a good spot. It's yeah, not not too long. ergonomic. There, look. The ergonomics in this thing are actually pretty good. There's there's really kind of non issues with ergonomics. And let's talk about more of that as we move up front. All right, Brian, moving on to the front. Let's check out the doors like we always do. Number one, we've got your wallet. So that's going in my pocket. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, but I wanted to point out this armrest for the uh, driver's arm and the, or the passenger's arm over there. It's soft, but it's like straight up like plastic, like vinyl, and it's very soft. And Brian, you make a point that it might not. Is that going to hold up? Gosh, I don't know. In five makes years, you, that'll be an elbow mark. That's makes you think it be. might not. Who knows? You do have a spot for a water bottle in the door pocket, which is handy. And the most important thing is this doesn't fall through, so you can put a phone in the arm holder, mm -hmm. and that part's nice. I get auto up and down for the front, but not the back. Moving on into the interior, Brian, these seats are not bad. I like this red trim. I think that's cool. It's pretty, you know, sporty looking, RS looking. Yeah, it looks good. Um, and it's bolstery e a little bit. Not so um, not it's soft, but, but comfy. It's soft, and I think one of the things we, we've talked about earlier driving for a little bit already is this is a comfortable hatch to drive across long distances. The seat's comfortable, and the road noise is low. That helps on a lot of things, especially on long highway trips. All right, Brian, let's move on to the instrument cluster and see what we get when we start this bad boy up. And oh, you see that gauge sweep, Brian? You know yeah. what that is? That's an actual gauge sweep because what? we have actual gauges. Those are actual dials. Yes, yes we have actual dials Frank, and gauges. It does feel premium in yeah. the world of digital clusters. It is so nice. And look, it just, it doesn't, it's not simulated. It feels real. It feels like it's supposed to be there. It's, it's very nice. So I like that part a lot. All right, so the center display gives you pertinent information. You can get tire pressures, you can get fuel mileage, that sort of thing. You can toggle through on the steering wheel on this side with different modes there. Moving on to this side of the steering wheel, you get S and I, that's uh, Brian, you call it what? C, what kind of C, C drive. Mode. C drive. Yeah, C, so that's C for yes drive or also sport or intelligence, <laughs> what that is. And that changes in the center cluster, you can see. Really what that does is throttle mapping and uh, steering, yeah, stiffens steering up, weight. that sort yeah. of thing. Um, and it changes the simulation of shifts because this Brian is a, what, is it, what do they call it? Uh, cinematronic, cinematic, HD. Yeah, whatever. So, all that matters is yeah. a CVT. And I'm just going to tell you, look, normally we try to be nice in these car reviews. That sucks. Yeah. That should be a manual. You should be the manual or you should at least get a traditional auto, but whatever. Or the option. Okay. Moving down here, you do get a Qi char wireless charger, Brian, which helps you do the wireless CarPlay. Yes? No? Mm -hmm. uh, well, this hasn't worked for me yet, but... I'm Allegedly, sure. this has CarPlay, and this is the Starlink, Brian. Let's move on to the center cluster here. It's portrait mode. Arguably, we like it landscape normally more than portrait, but, you know, that's just preference. Everything does work here. You do have all the information you need. Brian, I will say, say what you will about it. It does look dated, whatever. I don't, that's fine. But you get a volume yes. and a tuning knob. So Big there points. are some good things about actually keeping it old, and that's one of the advantages. Up here, you can have widgets so you click on that and you can actually change what different things you want here so let's make that water temp and brian pointed out this earlier water temp is normal oil okay. temp is 194 so i don't know if that's normal but it anyways. is nice to actually get a real oil temp gauge though that is cool so yeah. that, uh, it works 
Um, CarPlay does work. Um, you do get down here, Brian, you get USB-C, USB-A, and you still get an aux cord. So for those that actually have phones with aux cords anymore, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Sure, maybe, iPod. maybe you got your iPod like, hanging around, your Microsoft Zune. I don't know, but you can plug it in there. <laughs> Zune. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing though, Brian, is look up here, you get three cameras, and that is for the iSight, which Subaru started 2019-ish, uh, not too long ago. And they were kind of the first ones to really push it in all their cars, and it worked. The first generation of that worked pretty good. This is an improved version of that. It's, it's a little more high definition and sees farther out, which means it works even better than it already did. And that's pretty cool. Got to give them props for that. Other than that, Brian, this is just a good hatch. You can see really well. It's a comfortable driving position. And let's go take it for a spin. Deal. All right, Brian, we're in the Impreza RS 2.5. Hit it! Which stands for really slow. Oh, okay. Oh, shots fired. CVT, we're in S mode. Does the turbo kick in? There's not There's not a turbo. Oh. Hear that belt whine? No, me neither. 60 miles an hour. 9.7. 9.7, OK. Give me in it. Hmm. Please tell me off camera. It was we eight, got a better run. It was 8.9. 8.9? Without you in it. And that, that was the best of several runs. Oh. So I tried it with and without traction control. I tried it manually shifting. I tried it in manual mode, holding gears as long as, or fake gears as long as it can. And I tried it with the auto hold and just stomping the pedal. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say this. That's the best one. Here's what I'm going to say. Say it. <sighs> Some cars, that's okay. Sure. The problem with this car is, and we cannot hide it, we're just going to get to it, mm -hmm. is it says RS on the side of the yeah. thing, and it's supposed, it yeah. looks sporty, yeah. and I'm going to agree with you on this for the first time ever on camera, and it should be faster than that if it's got all that crap. This body is running checks this powertrain can't cash. Ooh, good. How long have you been sitting on that one? All day. <laughs> <laughs> Literally all day. And here's the deal, though. The old RS 2.5 that we've seen on Gran Turismo and never was that available in the States anyways, it wasn't fast. No. But it was engaging. Yes. And that's what I mean by this. Mm -hmm. The CVT, as an enthusiast vehicle, is an awful choice to put in here. I mean, I'm just, I don't know how else to put it. It's terrible. Now, a traditional auto would be like, okay, you live in the state, you don't want to do a clutch. That kind of makes sense. A, just a simple manual with this motor, because the motor is like, not bad. It's no. fine. Yeah. It's not enough. It's just not enough. If this said base or sport, you said that earlier off camera, you're right. This is totally acceptable. So what you're saying, Brian, is the previous generation, the 23s and 22s, you could get a manual. Right. Like sport or base. With, right. So what kind of solves the problems? Well, in terms of driver engagement. Now, let me get all that, all that <laughs> bias of enthusiasts out of the way. Let's acknowledge that Subaru has abandoned the enthusiast because the enthusiast has abandoned buying new cars in some ways, right? It's hard to fault Subaru in all honesty. You're right. Totally. To be fair, it's uh, and how you, can you be mad at them? They're, they're making, the, making what the people want. Right. There's some people want to buy. I understand that. Yeah. I just wish that the auto option had some gear sets that I think That'd be nice. Great. That'd be nice. Now, all out of the way, you buy this because you want the 2.5 instead of the 2 liter. That's what the RS gives you. And you want the better looking seats. And to be honest, there's not a huge penalty hit mileage wise with a 2.5. No, it's one city and one highway. That's it. Because 29 combined, 33 right. highway, that's good. All that being said, maybe make the 2.5 the base motor and just yeah. get rid of the 2 liter. Yeah. Don't have two assembly lines, just have one motor. I'm sure. okay with that. Sure. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe a WRX hatch could have the turbo mm -hmm. with the manual. Okay, Brian, let's, let's get to some other. I think you're making a really good point. This is a good hatch on its own. Yeah, it's a great hatch. If you compare it to like a Corolla XSE or mm -hmm. a Mazda 3 hatch. Civic hatch. Civic hatches. Eh, you know, it's, it's trading punches. Trading punches and different things, yeah. different wants and needs and desires. It's got the all-wheel drive. It's got right. good ergonomics. Right. This is, it handles well. It's comfortable. It's quiet. Right. This is going to work for a lot of people. The problem, though, is in its own lineup, in its own Subaru lineup, right. there's a Crosstrek that's really good. The Crosstrek's awesome. And, and by the way, there's no sporting intentions at all, so you're not disappointed with anything. There's a WRX that's about the same price as this. I mean, $1,000 more, maybe? Yeah, and turbo, yeah. and manual, and the same big back seat this has. So I just, if you're buying this, or, or there's a BRZ. <laughs> Which is brilliant, by the way. They so, make a great BRZ. Like if you're buying a Subaru, I just don't know who how you end up in here. Well, well if you're an enthusiast. So okay, you've, made, you've made the, the point that there's still an option with Subaru and the enthusiast, even though the STI is gone. You still have a WRX, which is 
about as fast as the old STI was, and the BRZ is still brilliant. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if you just want a good hatch with a manual, you can't get that anymore with, well, at all with Subaru. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen anymore. Yeah, no, fair enough. And look, I still, my biggest thing is cross track. Why would you get this over the cross track? Right. This is a little bigger interior space than a cross track. Yeah, so, and, and largely in the second row. Exactly. Second row so a maybe, lot more like Yeah, maybe you're carrying grandkids more often than the right. back, maybe. And the well, other, go ahead. Well, the other problem is now you go outside of the super lineup, GTIs exist. So, okay, thank you. For the price of the, now this one's loaded out mm -hmm. at 31 grand. This is the most expensive mm -hmm. Impreza you can get. The GTI starts at $30,000. Mm -hmm. And an Elantra ends not much more? It's like 32. The Mazda 3's out there? Okay, okay, good and point. And feels way more premium. Absolutely, now you trade space. There's less room Absolutely. In there. But I'm still comfortable on it to drive. Yeah. You do a Mazda 3 hatch, non-turbo, all-wheel drive. It's the same price as this. And it's got a better interior. I'll say this. Hmm. 20 years from now, mm -hmm. what's going to bring more and bring a trailer? This RS 2.5 or the other, the old RS 2.5? Oh, the old ones. Yeah. Because yeah, of the manual. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the only reason why. Now, that being said, this is a competent car. It's a quiet car. It is. And the buyer that cares about that is going to be really happy in here. Mm -hmm. They have made that work out really well. And like you said, you've got a ton of safety features of standard and all that kind of crap. It's still there. I'm just a little bummed that you can't get the phone anymore. And I also feel like it has no business with this color on this type of car. Okay, so maybe get a white one. There you go. Maybe don't get the RS. Right. And maybe well, you're okay. Well, or get the RS because you want the motor. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Although I think you might be better off saving that money and then like getting, I don't know, a motorcycle on the side. This cheap. I mean, that, make that be the fast one thing. Make this would be a commuter. Good call. Let us know what you're going to do in the comments. Let us know if you got one of these or if you got a different model or trim or or you have an old one with a manual. Cool. Save the money and get a nitrous kit for the two liter. Uh, okay. <laughs> here we go. Lots of options. That's what we're here for. We give you <laughs> options. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video. That's how we get to make more of these. And without that, we can't do it. Till next time. Yeah.